My name is Bini Amadeso. Uh, I've been here for the last two years as Ethiopian Airlines Regional Director for Austria and Eastern Europe. And I've been in the Ethiopian Airlines for the last uh, 11 years now. So currently I'm working in Vienna. Well, my name is Dimitri Bergintz uh, and uh, since three and a half years I'm uh, responsible for sales uh, of Ethiopian Airlines on the Austrian market. Ethiopian Airlines flies again from the 1st of July, its regular flights from Vienna to Africa and vice versa. We start since June, we start resuming uh, to passenger flights. So currently we have uh, four weekly flights and we are expecting to add some other frequencies. Based on the number of passengers we get now, these things are a bit improving now from time to time. And uh, we hope the future will be better. But we are currently have four flights, so weekly, and uh, we also open almost more than 70, uh, 70 destinations that we are operating before COVID. So uh, to Africa, mostly to Eastern Africa, uh, which our passengers travel for a leisure, they are open now. There may be some restriction in the travel but still, uh, we continue. Once the, each country opens their border for a commercial flight, we immediately resume our flight and uh, uh, go back to our business. Like all other airlines, Ethiopian Airlines, Africa's largest airline, which connects Africa to the world, has resumed its regular flights after a four-month suspension. However, it should be noted that only passengers were not allowed to travel as the company continued its activities of transportation of cargo. In Copenhagen Airlines, we have not uh, we didn't stop our operation at all. Uh, even though there is a number of passenger flight was re, uh, we stopped flying, but we are we were operating cargo and charter flight, so we've been busy working. That's why we are still in the business now. The African airline has been connecting Africa and Europe via Vienna since the 4th of June 2014. Radio Africa TV covered the first flight from Addis Ababa to Vienna. During the COVID-19 pandemic, Ethiopian airlines experienced the same difficulties as other transport companies. But it was able to adapt in its own ways. Yes, of course, we were all the time in the contact of the passengers. I can tell you that uh, here uh, at uh, Avia Reps, as GSA of Ethiopian Airlines in Austria, we have approximately at least 1,500 to 2,000 emails per month. So that means this is our direct contact to our esteemed passengers. The new thing is that finally we can offer them, besides of course uh, the rebooking and the postponing of that travel, we can offer them also the travel to Africa. Because since beginning of July, Ethiopian Airlines is flying again to Vienna four times a week. Most airlines currently they are affected and uh, most of them maybe they may no longer be in the business. But Ethiopian Airlines with the hard working and uh, with, a, with a very good management uh, influence the company uh, still cons uh, continue to operate as in uh, with a different vision so uh, we are still in the business I mean the whole industry the aviation industry and other industries also highly affected due to the COVID but uh, the good management decision and the hard working of the Benny Lines employees uh, we managed to pass all this challenging period. The impact of COVID is almost devastating. Never before the airline industry was hit so hard as uh, during this COVID time. Uh, we have noticed uh, April, May, almost complete lockdown in the airline traffic. And now since June, it's slowly recovering, but uh, it will take quite a long time, I believe, uh, before it will be back on the levels of 2019.
In the COVID time, we didn't sell many tickets, uh, especially in April and May. We were dealing mainly with uh, uh, rebookings and reroutings of the passengers who were stranded in Africa at that time. And of course, with those who postponed that travel to the later period. Africa continues to amaze the world as it shows a fierce resistance to COVID-19. In spite of all this, let us question the head office of the Ethiopian airline in Vienna about the factors that led them to launch the regular flights four times a week instead of seven times a week as was before the pandemic. What exactly happened in Europe is happening in Africa and uh, soon it, the numbers or the figures will start declining because a lot of uh, procreation has been, has been undertaken. So... I think it should be settled like we had in, our, in Europe and America, especially in Europe. Africa has now at least some examples how other countries have uh, been fighting against this uh, pandemic, uh, from China to Europe and to the Americas. Of course, there are different approaches and I'm sure that African countries have seen these different approaches and they will implement the best uh, what is now known uh, in the earth uh, to fight against this uh, disease. Africa, they, we have learned from China, from Asia, from Europe. Now, when uh, it's coming to Africa, I mean... Uh, the governments were ready on that time. Everything was they have they were they were having enough times to prepare. But uh, compared to in terms of population number, something maybe the population in Africa would since it is higher, the the impact may be uh, the number may be the figure may be big. But I don't think it, we will have a different scenario in Africa. And what are the measures taken by the airline to protect their passengers from getting infected with the virus during the flight? Yeah, this, this is a good question. I mean, this is, uh, I mean, now from now on, it is, it's a new normal, you know. Due to COVID, things have changed and uh, we think that this change uh, maybe stay for longer with us. So uh, we adjust immediately ourselves to the new normal. Uh, there will be, uh, our crews will have the face mask, face cover, and uh, all the necessary protections so that uh, this COVID will not be transmitted in passengers, and the cleanliness and everything will be in order according to the WHO requirements. So passengers will not uh, have that uh, um, doubt or fear within themselves that whenever I travel inside the craft, I'll have this problem. It's uh, all has been uh, adjusted according to the requirements, even at the airport, the social distancing, everything. At the same time, the, uh, we have updated our online system as well so that passengers can do everything online so that they shouldn't, they couldn't, they, they don't have to in queue at the airport, they don't have to check in, they can do everything from their mobile phones. So we have adjusted our operation accordingly. So passengers do everything accordingly and they can have a very safe life. Africa has now at least some examples how other countries have been fighting against this pandemic, uh, from China to Europe and to the Americas. Of course, there are different approaches and I'm sure that African countries have seen these different approaches and they will implement the best uh, what is now known uh, in the earth uh, to fight against this uh, disease. Well, as mentioned, uh, we have almost no tourist traffic to Africa. So it's uh, difficult then to recommend somebody who is from um, Austria to travel to Africa because there is currently almost no uh, request for tourism traffic. The business travelers and the passengers who are going to visit their families and friends, they already know where they will go. So they are more concerned about the schedule, about the flight times, about the days of operation. These are the questions which we receive now <coughs> from the passengers and of course these are also the answers which we give to them. I mean, transit and now 
it's been easier than before because now the we have we've been last time we've been discussing that we have on the expansion program so that expansion now has been finalized and uh, all the wings different wings has been added to the airport so we have more capacity more than double capacity now uh, in uh, our uh, at this airport so uh, it will be smooth transit uh, as, as well as we have a short time of transit and the facility now what we have is I'm not exaggerating but it's, it's per the international standards and uh, we are even better of more, more than, better of than most of the airports in the world so we have all the facilities all the securities and health protection as well so it's uh, it's in a good condition returning to the big question that has been the subject of much ink and spital that of what would happen if the passengers could not come back home because of the new development of the pandemic, as was the case since March 2020? This one, from initially, we have set rules and regulations uh, that help passengers when uh, this COVID broke out. So uh, those passengers who've been uh, bought already ticket for the travel, uh, they have the different option that we already advise all our, our customers or they can find it in our website that whenever they want to extend their tickets they can extend it free of charge and said uh, no I will not be traveling this year so I will, uh, I will extend it for the next year there is also an option there that we can extend up for the next or if they want to have the, the ticket in terms of voucher which they can use for the next years, they will get the those to get into vouchers, and they will use it for any travel in the next years uh, to any destination they prefer to travel. And it will penalize, gives a penalty waiver and uh, rebooking waivers, so that the passengers would be using their ticket for to fly in the future. Passengers are mainly concerned about the conditions of travel. How should they behave at the airport? How should they behave in the aircraft? How firm is uh, their journey to Africa? So it means that are they going to be able to come back uh, when uh, after their journey ends? These are the main uh, questions. We have to see this thing in two points, in two, uh, in, from two directions. First, we have to understand, know that there is. Uh, new way of life from now. We have to know that. Uh, COVID may be staying for us, with us for the next one year, two years. We don't know yet. We don't know. We can't predict the future. It's all lies on the on the, whether we find the medicine or not. It, it's, it's based on that. But what we know is that we can protect. We can protect ourselves. We can protect our family and the rest. So with that protection mechanisms, we believe that uh, we provide our service accordingly. It is obvious that many questions are arousing curiosity at this time when Europe is beginning to put up restrictive measures against the spread of coronavirus. What kind of passengers are buying Ethiopian Airlines ticket now? What are the most popular destinations? And what was the previous way of buying the tickets or making their reservations? These are the questions that the management of Ethiopian Airlines in Vienna is trying to answer. Although, of course, uh, due to the COVID and due to everything, uh, the structure of our passengers has changed significantly. Before, we have majority of the leisure travelers, so of the people who are going for holidays to Africa, to African destinations, but now the situation has changed. Mainly we see the passengers who are going to Africa to visit their families, to visit their friends and a little bit of business travel. Tourism is unfortunately for the time being almost stalled. So there is no tourist traffic to Africa at this time. Yes, uh, Ethiopian is uh, currently flying altogether to 86 destinations. Among them are 18 in uh, Ethiopia. 15 in East Africa, 
13 in West Africa, 7 in South Africa, and 15 in Europe, and 11 in Asia, and 5 in America. To go more into details, especially to Africa, which are interested, I'd say in Western Africa we are flying almost to all countries except Nigeria, like uh, to Cotonou, to Abidjan, to Dakar, to Liberville, to Niamey, Bamako, and some other destinations. In South Africa we are flying to Zambia, to Zimbabwe, to Congo, to both Congo, Brazzaville and uh, Kinshasa. In East Africa we are present in Tanzania, in Kenya, on Seychelles, uh, so uh, there are quite some destinations and uh, countries which are already open. As already Mr. Adisu said, uh, Ethiopia immediately resumes the flight as soon as the country permits that uh, the foreign airlines are landing on its soil. Well, the people who want to fly to Africa now, of course, have um, many options uh, to get the basic information uh, about uh, the flights to Africa. One of the options is, uh, of course, uh, the <coughs> web page of Ethiopian Airlines and, uh, of course, maybe even better option is to contact us uh, to that they get exact and precise information, especially about the flight times, about the ticket conditions and uh, about the ticket price. Passengers may contact us at any time through email address uh, reservationset.austria at aviareps.com uh, or uh, they can phone us uh, during our opening hours, which are a little bit restricted due to the Kurzarbeit uh, regulations. We are open every day from Monday to Thursday from 11 to 13, so from 11 to 1 o'clock in the afternoon. We have uh, more or less the same price uh, policy as we had before. The only tariffs which are now missing are the promotional adva advance purchase uh, fares, which were of course the lowest, but uh, now people are buying the tickets uh, not in advance as it was uh, behavior before, but in the last minute. And in the last minute ticket prices were always higher as for the advance purchase. And this is the reason why the people have maybe the feeling that Ethiopian raised the prices. The prices for the last minute tickets remained the same as they were before. Ethiopian Airlines in Vienna is located at Untere Donaustrasse in the second district. <laughs> Eso, 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 eso,